Wines Day. Happy Wines Day. <laughs> I thought that that was going to be a much more lively pop, but it was it was like a lady sighing. Which is technically how you're supposed to do it. Happy Casual Wine Geek Wednesday. Hello. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Amanda. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm much better now. Sit in your tiny, silent little pop. What are you pouring? Um, so, well, we're talking about something that you don't necessarily... Oh, yeah. What's our theme? Well, okay. Sorry. So, our, our topic today is... Um, Wine diamonds. Wine? Oh, fancy. <clears throat> fancy you know, fancy. diamonds are a girl's best friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about wine diamonds, which are tartrates that uh, can belong in your wine. And we'll talk about where they come from and cream like. of tartar and maybe some wine myths. And, you know, if you see them, do you automatically assume that it's bad? Um, oh, you're making a face. What's wrong? It smells delicious. Oh, okay. So anyway, so I was shopping for wine yes. before I was coming over because it's, um, you know, holidays have wrapped up. Things are... We're moving on. Oh, God. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm over all of it. We're moving on. Yes. Uh, moving on up. So uh, I was shopping and I was like, oh, well, you know, we're having pork for dinner tonight. And mm -hmm. I wasn't sure, you know, uh, you know, this thing, that thing. I'm like, I want a pink bubble, something maybe a little different. And uh, this was recommended to me. Um, this is a Cremant from the Loire Valley. Um, so this is from the Chateau Brézy, uh, which is just outside Samur. Um, so is not only a UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, but also um, it was a really important area for wine. Um, so they're really high elevation. It is really good. Have Porous you chalky this? limestone. I'm trying to just like pull some oh. interesting things. Uh, so this is 100% 100% Cabernet Franc. Mm -hmm. From the Loire. Mm -hmm, from the Loire Valley. And um, who's the producer on it? Chateau de Brezzi. It is really good. We have um, swag coming. Secret mm -hmm. swag for Patreon mm -hmm. members. If you're not a Patreon member, you can sign Ooh. up. It's a dollar. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> that wine is a lot of fun. And Patreon is a lot of fun. <laughs> True and, that. Um, we have t-shirts coming. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah, the yeah, big yeah. thing I wanted to talk about. Housekeeping today. We have t-shirts. Um, they we've narrowed down the color. It's either going to be a black t-shirt or a navy blue t-shirt. Practically the same thing for me since I'm colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> and they're ten dollars. So if you want a t-shirt, let me know. I'm going to put an order in um, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, casualwinegeeks at gmail dot com. Yep, or casualwinegeeks dot com, and there's a little contact form on there. Live it, learn it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Casual Wine Geek Wednesday. <laughs> We're your new best friends. <laughs> <laughs> Please write us notes. Oh gosh, that was it. Okay, now that now I'm free. Now we can play. Business is over. Let's play. <laughs> 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 uh, I got juice in my cup. I'm ready to go. I like it. I like it. Um. So then the other thing I brought is since um New Year mm -hmm. 2018 um and I'm gonna start trying um a lot of wine from an area that I'm not super super familiar with is Spain. So I brought a uh, Rioja. Oh, I love it. So we can talk about that when we talk about that. However, bubbles first. Bubbles because first. Because classy ladies drink their bubbles first. Yeah. And second and third and for dessert. <laughs> I, you know what? 100% Cabernet Franc is not my, you know, go-to for a rosé. But I will tell you that this is damn delicious. I will be getting this again. 22 yes. bucks. $22. $22. Wow. It's got wow. a real, it's real powdery. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's got the weight. It's got the acidity. It's real. I, I like it a lot, actually. Um, hey, <laughs> I do good work. I know a thing about a thing. And one yeah. of those things is wine diamonds. Oh, is it wine diamonds like for my hands? No. Wine diamonds. For They're water soluble, dear. <laughs> they'll, they'll, you, can't, you can't put them in a setting. Those are the... You uh, can't... Uh, yeah, we had um, a bottle a couple of weeks ago. Where we had wine diamonds on the cork. I took a picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll post it up. And we're like, oh my gosh, we have a wine diamonds thing coming up. So Yeah, it was very serendipitous. Yeah. We popped all of our corks earlier and none of, we have no, it's like a prize inside. No prizes inside. But you brought something from Alsace. I did. I, bought, uh, I brought, I'm, I was on a Pinot kick apparently. I brought Pinot Gris from Alsace because I knew if nothing else, Brandon will be happy with a Pinot Gris from Alsace. Oh, it's like the only thing I like. I mean, it's not the only thing I like. I like a lot of things. But yeah. if we're going to drink Pinot Gris. It's got to be from Alsace. Alsace is where it's at, man. 
and I brought a Pinot Noir. And guess where it's from? Oregon. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to bring a Pinot Noir, it's going to be from Oregon. That's yeah. my guess. Yeah. And it's a producer I've never tried before. I'm very excited about um, trying it. And uh, I tried to find something that might have a tartrate crystal in it because it's cold. Yes. And that's what you were told when you were hunting for this, right? Was Yes. yes. Cold. If what is it? Cold treated? Cold stabilization. Cold stabilization. Yeah. So if it comes from a cold area and it does not go through, does not go through cold stabilization? Well, okay. So that's why, that's why I was turned to Alsace for the Pinot Gris. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Uh, so for everybody listening, if you've <laughs> ever had a bottle of white wine that looks like it had little floaty bits that yeah. were like tiny, tiny and flat and at the very bottom. And they look like crystals. Or right? you've opened your wine and on the bottom of the cork, it looks like there are crystals. That's what we're talking about when we talk about wine diamonds. Um, sometimes people think it's a fault. It is not a fault. Not a fault. It is not going to affect your wine in any nope. way, shape, or form. Mm -mm. It's a naturally occurring thing in the wine world. And we'll kind of talk about why and how that sort of plays in and how it um, affects the world of baking. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. It's crazy. We're all connected, kids. Be nice to, and your, be nice to everybody. it's not a fault. Period. Not a fault. No. Nope, not a fault. And we will talk about faults, flaws, and fuck-ups for sure in wine, but that comes in a few weeks. Yeah, it's super harmless. It's not going to affect the flavor of your wine at all. So what it is, is tartaric acid is the primary acid found in wine that uh, really helps promote balance in terms of mouthfeel. It really helps affect how your tongue tastes the liquid. And this is... Just to be super duper duper de duper de duper de clear, tartrate crystals not the same as sediment. Sediment no has no no like no no grainy, that's a, yeah that's a different that's totally that's a different, different thing. animal. If you sediment is is solid, these tartrate mm -hmm. crystals when they heat up or come into contact with water they dissolve. Yeah. So they're right. not they're not um, because of filtering or a lack of filtering they're not because of unfiltered wine it has it's a totally different nothing to do with it no which, it's a chemical reaction which we're gonna find out about i bet yeah so here's here's what it is <laughs> are you ready for this because mama did some fucking homework I, it's okay can so. i also say that i've never taken a chemistry <laughs> class i got out of it because i was a band kid and so like oh i got God. to i never took chemistry and i never took physics so we're getting into the super geeky part of wine already <laughs> we can do this However, hey, I'm a scientist. I am not. Yeah, it's going to be for all those people out there listening. Thank you, A, for listening. And B, it, we're going to get super geeky, but it's not going to be boring. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. What I, did I say when I sat down today? It was like, I love what we do because I learn something new every week. Yeah. Like I'm constantly just learning new things. Like, oh, I had no idea why. Oh, that's actually kind of fascinating. And then I fall down this rabbit hole and my poor husband's like, I'm just isn't sitting there time, like... Isn't it time for your podcast? What? <laughs> or I'll just be sitting there like doing research and... Yeah. Oh. Huh. Oh, I guess that kind of makes sense. And I'm just like, <laughs> you know, clicking here and clicking there and reading yeah. article and, yeah. and yeah. you know, reading research and, and, you know, reading message boards and shit and comments and what the fuck ever because, um, wow, on the internet, people are... Crazy. Get off the internet, kids. It is a dangerous place. Opinionated. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to like, you know, light off a volcano when you're safe behind a screen. Yeah. Yeah. I was just reading comments about something, a product that um, someone sent me a link to. It's a it's a wine aerator, but it turns your, you put it on the top of your bottle and it turns your bottle into a tap. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, uh, say it again. I'm sorry. Yeah, so it's an aerator, but it is also for your wine bottle. For your wine bottle, but so, you put it on the top of your bottle. So, for instance, this beautiful bottle of Spanish wine could do with a little aeration. Yeah, it's a 2012 um, Riojas in in Spain. There, uh, this is a Crianza, so it spends a year in oak and a year in the bottle. Those are the laws for it to be a Crianza. Reserva and Grand Reserva, the years and um, for oak and bottle are different. <clears throat> but it, but this is a thing to go on the top to like give it a little bit of air, mm -hmm. and then it's also a tap. Correct. So you can press a button. You just press a button, and it just 
pours your wine. So you can tap your bottle of wine. No need for a keg anymore. It's a home tap. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about why this ties in with the episode in a bit. Okay. Can Let's I ask bring you it how much it costs? The thing? Yeah. The little like gadget, the little wine gadget. Um, oh goodness. Hold please. Is that our hold music? Your call is important to us. Please stay on the line. Do 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 the hustle. Do 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 do. This is your hold music. It's because when we we were watching um. Uh, we were watching Death Becomes Her the other day. Oh my god! And at the very beginning, of course, we were commenting on like the lighting and the costumes, and this, it's the most amazing movie. Oh ever. god, it's brilliant! But it screams <laughs> early '90s so bad. Uh, but at one point, it's set in I think 1978 uh, yeah. when she's in the musical at the very yeah. beginning, uh-huh. and yeah. then all of a sudden they start to do the hustle, and like a disco ball drops, and it's amazing. Anyway, the hustle's been stuck in my head <laughs> since. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Anyway, uh, it's fifty nine ninety nine plus shipping from Amazon. Sixty bucks. Sixty bucks, and what's okay? I'm sorry, we got like we got ahead of ourselves, way over our skis there. Let's go. Let's <laughs> dial it back a second. We're drinking. A Don't sparkling. hang up. Your call is important <laughs> to us. Yeah, we're drinking a sparkling Cabernet Franc. We have poured ourselves a little bit of Pinot Gris from Alsace, and. We're talking about tartrates today. Wine diamonds. Wine diamonds, because diamonds are a girl or guy's best friend. Do the hustle. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Shit. That's going to be my trigger word now. I'm like a Pavlov dog. It's like a safe word. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. You're just going to text me the word hustle, and I'll just start like... You know what's so funny Shit. is that I, I have a thing on my desk. You know what that's like old school wood grained and a gold like gaudy mm-hmm, nameplate, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and on the front of it it says "Every day I'm hustling." <laughs> I like that. I like that. Ooh, this is a nice bean of grape. Yeah, tartrate crystals. See, you're so full of flavor. You're unlike, right. You're absolutely. You're not wrong. You're unlike right. swill from other parts of the world. Oh. <laughs> Don't be a pretentious wine fuck. Don't be a pretentious wine fuck. I'm Brandon. sure that there's delicious Pinot Gris from other places. I just haven't tried it yet. Not true. You tried Pinot Gris from Oregon. It was pretty tasty. Yeah. See, there you go. Who gets the pretentious wine fuck of the award today? We do. Uh, well. <laughs> hey, at least I'm willing to call myself on it. Yeah. Which I think is important. Self reflection in this new year. New year, new you. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Hashtag blessed. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> wine diamonds, tartrates, <laughs> chemical reactions. Yep. Cream. I feel like tartar. there's a song there. <laughs> um, okay, so tartaric acid we've talked about is the primary acid. Let's dial it back. back it up. Come, come with me on this on this science journey. In wine, there are three types of acid. That are that happen during the winemaking mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so this is this is a chemical reaction due to part of the winemaking process. Yes, it happens. Got it. Um, so what happens after when this acid ends up binding with potassium at a low temperature is when those crystals are formed. So anywhere below forty degrees Fahrenheit. Got it. When it's cold. When it's cold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is is what's going to happen um, when they bind with potassium. So these formations are actually cream of tartar, which is what we use in baking. In baking. Now, cream of tartar is an interesting little. <laughs> I heard a rumor about cream. Of yeah. Tartar. Okay. So talk to me about that rumor because I did some fast research. That slutty, slutty little cream of tartar. No. <laughs> no. No, I heard a rumor about cream of tartar that most of the cream of tartar sold in a grocery store is sourced from wineries. Is that correct? Well, so when you heard that statement, yes, what were your initial thoughts? Uh, that's bullshit. Why? Because I, I thought to myself, really, somebody is taking byproducts from a process that's already happening that you would otherwise throw away. Why not? Putting it in a package 
and selling it. It happens all the time. I know. There are constant byproducts from Have you certain seen processes. How much expensive it is? Well, for good reason though, because yeah. if you think about which we'll talk about here in a second, because I did research about that statement <laughs> like in minutes. <laughs> Well, see, and I didn't know how much effort it took to go into having cream of tartar. I thought it was just made in a lab. Right. That so that is not the case. It is not the case. It's actually the acidic salt that is found in sediments in the barrels that are used for fermenting wine. So cream of tartar is produced from, they're called argols, mm -hmm. A-R-G-O-L-S, uh, which I feel like is a Jim Henson <laughs> um, dark crystal creature. <laughs> I, with the, like like with the I'd, hair it like, was just the first thing yeah. that i thought of when i read that word earlier was like oh jim henson dark crystal mm -hmm. hmm. probably because it sounds like agra the, oh, with the one eye yeah. and the, the mm -hmm. fizz gig and anyway um <laughs> it's a really good movie uh anyway so they're formed on the inner walls of vats during fermentation and you a torch is actually used to remove them what happens after that is they're dried they're baked in a 900 degree furnace. What? 900 degrees. That's hot. Um, after that, they're ground into a powder f and then treated with a little bit of sulfuric acid and carbonate um, and then also with a little bit of carbon to remove any color. Do you think that the barrels after the winemaking process are sent to like the cooper to do this? Because they're not doing this in, I mean, they're not doing this in the winery. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how it's, I don't know, like, I'm sure it's I've not never every seen, winery. I'm sure yeah. that. Um, I've never seen a winery with a 900 degree furnace. Well, no, the winery is not doing it. They're going in and taking out the cream of tartar and then oh, that happens elsewhere because it has to get treated. I see. I see. I see. Got it. Wineries aren't producing cream of tartar. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm sure it's like big producers who have a, a contract with um who's a Somebody. who's a big spice company mccormick's oh yeah. right so i'm sure that mccormick's has a contract now i'm not a lawyer i'm not saying that this is fact right don't sue us um let's go find out how cream of tartar is made i would like to go take take a tour of a factory or somebody to see like we scoop it out of this barrel when it's not, like i would be really super interested um well potassium by tartrate uh, crystallizes on the wall of the wine barrels. So in the crude form, it's also known as bees wing. So it's scraped off the walls from the barrels um, wet. Mm -hmm. The wet tartrate is then dried out in the open and then baked in 800 to 900 degrees. Um, it doesn't say really how it's harvested. Hmm. It's just more about the process like once they get it. But it is true that most of the cream of tartar that we buy at the grocery store is from up is a byproduct from the wine. Oh, it's just hands down a natural byproduct of the winemaking process. How interesting. Uh, however, it's been around for about seven thousand years. There are traces of calcium tartrate sediments that are found in winemaking jars discovered in the ruins in villages in northern Iran. The cradle of civilization. Mm -hmm. Right where wine where wine comes from, Georgia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. Iran, that whole Fertile Crescent area. C Something mountains. Caucus. Caucus mountains. Uh, the modern process of manufacturing cream of tartar was developed by a Swedish chemist in 1769. Wow, you know a lot about cream of tartar. I, I told you. I did research in the two <laughs> minutes since you were like, I heard this rumor. I don't know if it's true. And I'm like, I'm going to find out and I'm going to tell you if it's true. <laughs> Guess yeah. what? It's true. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, because I'm really into the stories and I get caught up in the like the storytelling. I was like, oh my gosh. And then... Well, so it wasn't until a lot of the properties of cream of tartar were discovered by Jean Pef's Jean Baptiste Biot in mm -hmm. 1832. The powder has the property of rotating polarized light. Apart from that, um, cream of tartar burns into an intense blue flame, indicate the presence of a high potassium content in the salt. None of that is are my own words. I that was all cited, quoted. Chemist, I am not. Yes. Cite your sources. It's the, one of the only really big things I learned in college. Cite, Cite your, your sources. sources. <laughs> um, okay, so burns with a blue flame indicating the presence of a high potassium content in the salt. Uh, so the uses and processes of preparing cream of tartar um, were further, further perfected in French cuisine. I don't know why that sentence was so hard for me to say. Further perfected. It's because of the alliteration. Further perfected. 
throat. Protect it. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's the alliteration. Your mouth doesn't want to make those. It's the er, per, Mm -hmm. ter. It's it's all. Anyway. Yep. I have a fat tongue. (laughs) Sometimes it's. Better to taste wine with, Sometimes words are hard. (laughs) Anyway, so that's kind of where creative tartar comes from. It was discovered in 1769, really kind of developed in the 1830s. Um, yeah, we use it in cooking. We use it in baking. You know what's so interesting as I like sitting here thinking about it after tasting a couple of glasses of wine, cooking like food and wine really has dictated the direction of civilization. It's amazing. Like when we become curious about what we're eating and drinking, science becomes more important, right? Like chemistry, chemists who are figuring things out like Louis Pasteur are, are like, Oh, for sure. And right? even before that, if yeah. you want to talk about the birth of, you know, certain beers, IPA came about because you had to treat the beer a certain way to make sure that it didn't spoil between here and India. Yeah. It's just right? so like, amazing So it's, me. or, you know, the spice route and the spice trade yeah. and how salt was currency for a long time. And it really, yeah. um, yeah, so when we talk I don't about, know, but then you, so but then crazy. you talk about how it also influences, <laughs> modes of transportation once right. once railways became popular and you didn't have to move things up and down a river it dictated the size of bottles that you used because boats can only have a certain amount of yeah. weight and if mm-hmm. you make it a certain size or a certain thinness then you can get more things in the package more packages on the boat and more all the things yeah it's all interconnected it just like it blows my mind you know when you talk about when you pull like one little string or one little thread in the wine world it oh. starts just unraveling well, it's like when i do research thing. I had no idea about cream of tartar really being discovered in the 1760s and then having to, you know, I had, that's like. I had no idea it came from a wine barrel. Yeah. Every day I learn a new thing. I like. In terms of just doing research just for this podcast, which I really enjoy because I feel like there's a lot I know about wine, but there's a lot I don't know about wine and everything else. Right. And how it all connects and how, yeah. We're all connected. Don't be a dick. (laughs) the end <laughs> moral of the story is <laughs> pour yourself a glass of wine and listen to the podcast <laughs> yeah don't be a pretentious wine fuck drink pinot gris from everywhere from everywhere <laughs> don't at least try pinot gris from everywhere do as i sometimes say not as i mostly always do well i mean we've already decided early on that rules apply to other people <laughs> oh but i'm I used to be a catholic and i'm such a rule follower now here's the thing though I can justify a lot of things and I tend to ask for forgiveness and not permission. I think in life that is a great general rule for sure. That's one of the biggest things I took away from the Catholic church. (laughs) (laughs) Ask for forgiveness. Don't ask for permission. Right. Right. Anyway. Anyway. So that was the sidebar in terms of cream of tartar. Uh, and cream of tartar is important when you're talking about wine diamonds because this is the this is the end process of of wine diamonds, right? Yes. Like we skipped all the way to the end, and now we're going to fill in the middle of the sandwich. Correct. So okay. now tartrates may be removed if you're using cold stabilization. So this is where temperature comes into play. Ah. Um, you know, cold stabilization is when the tank is chilled down to roughly 32 degrees Mm -hmm. it depends Mm -hmm. um for a certain period of time before you start bottling Mm -hmm. um what that does it helps that crystals do not form later on so cold stabilizing has to be super super carefully managed though Mm -hmm. um colder temperatures tend to increase the wine's ability to absorb oxygen cold temperatures cold temperatures Which a lot of times will lead to premature aging, which is a thing you don't want, especially in white wine. Right. Which is why they say that, you know, aging a white wine is a little bit more tricky than a red. Right. And so if you're introducing tartarates um, or you're reducing them, cold stabilizing might not fully eliminate them. Got it. Cold stabilizing will work most of the time, but sometimes because of chemistry, no the end the end science hashtag science um (laughs) okay so it's more common to get tartrates in a white wine versus a red wine versus that's actually the next sentence in my notes oh really (laughs) yeah psychic (laughs) um it's more common for tartrates in a white wine than a red wine but a red wine could get them after a certain amount of time in a cellar 
Or if they were to get cold again. Yes. Wh- which one? The first one? The first one. If it if a red wine has been in your cellar for a while, it could. Which is one of the reasons why it's important to keep your wine at a consistent temperature all the time. Uh, yes. All right. We were somewhere not too long ago and they had a really beautiful selection of port mm-hmm. and a lot of vintage dates that I was like, oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. Oh, that, ooh, that thing. Mm-hmm. And then the husband was like, yes. But look how they're stored. Oh. And because I'm short, everything just looks tall to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, he's very tall. He is much taller than I'm. He's like, it's too warm up here. <laughs> like this heat is. If they're storing. Yeah. If they're storing them up by the lights and by mm-hmm. the heaters and, you know, at the top of the whatever. Yeah, that's rough. It was a little like, oh, oh. but it's vintage. Don't get caught up in it. Don't get caught up in it. Um. All right. So. This sparkling that you brought is amazing. It's oh, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's getting really a little good, bit. Eh? It's getting a little bit warmer, so you're really getting the um, deeper flavors. Bin Forty One in West Seattle. I'm telling you, her sparkling selection is spot on. This is a person I'd like to meet because she sounds like she has great taste in life. <laughs> oh, she has wonderful <laughs> taste in life. Yeah. Well, she picks that sparkling very well for her shop. It's one of the smaller shops I really enjoy going to because I feel like I don't get overwhelmed with the amount. Um, (coughs) Folks who work there are really knowledgeable about all the wine. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions, it's a good spot to go. They've got a great everyday value section. Mm -hmm. Um, Little value baskets. It's it's and the sparkling section, I think, is just spot on. Really good champagne, really good Mm -hmm. grower champagne. Um, Some weird stuff. I saw... Some stuff from Slovenia that I want to try. I saw a really, really beautiful bottle of Cava. It's a little pricey, but it's like, it's, it's, it's the business. We should try it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you ready for the next wine? Um, yes. Hold please. So the next wine is, uh, surprisingly a wine I have not tried yet. It is from the Oregon Willamette Valley. This is a 2014 And the label is 60 Souls. And this is why I bought it. I'll read the back. An 1842 census of the original Oregon Territory made reference to a group of settlers as 60 Souls. These souls represented the founding families of the region that is now home to many world-class vineyards. Huh, interesting. This wine, sourced from select vineyards in the Willamette Valley, pays respect to those original settlers who first toiled and cherished these lands. I thought that was a really beautiful thing to put on your label. What? Tell me. Can I make a comment? Yeah, of course. They weren't the first people to toil and work those lands. I agree. I agree. (laughs) Absolutely, I agree. Indigenous people were there first. It's an interesting... I love it. No, I think it's a great great story. I just... Mm -hmm. The wording of that statement makes me cringe a lot. (laughs) It makes a sorry. It's a little no. Rough. You know what? I'm not sorry. Don't be sorry. Ooh. Don't be sorry. It's from the Yamhill Carlton and Eola Amity Hills AVAs. That's my only gripe. <laughs> and it is bottled by Red Hill Hills Road Vinters in Dundee. It's an interesting label. <laughs> He's pumping his fist. I want to get a video. Hold on. Okay, we're back. This is so. Do you like it? I haven't even tasted it yet. Yeah. Oh, but I can. Can I tell you something else? Not having to do with this label or Oregon. Pinot? No. <laughs> Just a tiny little uh, thing? No. No? You don't want to know anything? I'm kidding. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> yes, you can always tell me stuff. I read this really amazing article about the rocks. The rocks AVA in Oregon. Uh, whatever. They say Washington. Washington has the rocks. Blah, blah, blah. You're the well, it's are... part of Walla Walla. Yeah, but most of it's in Oregon. Mountain Free Water is in Oregon. And? And I want to get some wine from there. Okay, let's there was go on this a road like, trip. Yeah, there was this big um, article about the al- alluvial soil. Mm-hmm. Alluvial. Alluvial. Yeah. Correct. That's you said that right. Yes. I don't know anything about it. It sounded really super scientific. And then they were talking about the grapes and the people over there are like growing the things and making the wine. And what are they? What are no they idea. growing? I have we no don't idea. know. Yeah, it's hot and dry and probably a, probably a red. I would imagine. But I know people that um, planted planted vines out there in like 2000. Oh, those vines are probably prime for. Go. Yeah, I know. I mean, you know. Oh 
Anyway. Anyway. 60 Souls. This is pretty tasty. 1842. I dig it. I, I like it. I'm still, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Sorry. I spaced out there for a second. <laughs> Cork all that bit. Yeah. So we've talked about how tartrates are more commonly found in whites than reds, partially yes. because you are, um, well, uh, lot of reasons well tartaric acid levels in white wines are just higher than red wines just in general mm-hmm. um you're also probably putting white wine in the fridge for longer at colder temperatures than you are red that is absolutely true so taking it back down to that 40 degree is like yep. the, the happy mark for those things kind of that potassium binding um so you might not actually see the tartrate crystals in the store, but you might see them after you put them in the fridge, like yeah, after you maybe. bottle in the yeah. fridge. Because it has to do with the acid levels. It has to do with mm-hmm. yeah temperature. It's, you know, it's all the things that are really important. Well, one of the best ways to minimize the presence of wine diamonds. It just sounds so fancy. Um, in your white wine is to store the bottles between 55 and 60 degrees and then chill them down to 46 to 48 uh, prior to serving. Do not store your white wines in your fridge all the time because fridges tend to be much colder mm-hmm. and that is really going to encourage these wine diamonds to start growing because the crystals will dissolve in warmer water. Um, and if you taste them, they're not, they're not going to hurt you. If, yeah. if you know, you get a sip, right. it's, it's fine. It's nothing. It's nothing. I store quite a bit of white wine in my fridge. I have my reasons, but. Do you care about wine diamonds forming at the in your wine no because as it warms up or as it hits my palate i you know like you're not gonna notice it yeah, you can also filter if someone is really concerned um you yeah. know run something through an aerator run something through a cheesecloth yeah i i bet i've got stuff in my fridge that i've had in there for six months like a, a white white wine but i do it in the bottom the very bottom drawer of my fridge because it's closest to the motor of the fridge oh interesting yeah and then I keep like all the things that I need cold kind of in the middle. And then I keep things that I don't need to be as cold ne- near the light. Up at the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, interesting. How people pack their fridge to me is very fascinating. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Your, your fridge is built very differently than my fridge. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Your fridge is very tall with a lot more um, shelving. Mm-hmm. My fridge is very wide with very little shelving. So it's That's very true. deep. Yeah. Which I feel like is a problem because I lose... I, I feel like I've lost the Lindbergh baby in my fridge <laughs> at some point. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, wine diamonds. Don't put them on your wrist or your finger. Yeah, they'll melt. They'll dissolve. <laughs> they'll dissolve. They're not going to kill you. And they're completely natural. And they make up cream of tartar that we bake with. Um, okay, so you talked about acids earlier. Yes. Do you remember... The three. The three, or at least two. Malic. Mm-hmm. Tartaric. Mm-hmm. And do you have the answer? Well, no, that's why I was asking. <laughs> that's how questions work. I don't know the answer to a thing, but I think you know the answer to. Insert question, and with question mark. No? Is that, uh, I thought you knew I the wrong? answer. You were like setting me up. Okay, it's, so it's tartaric, mm-hmm. malic, mm-hmm. and the lactic acid is a byproduct of the malic acid. Right. That's how that's how you get malolactic fermentation, which is yes. not really fermentation. You're just converting malic lactic to, malic, malic acid to, to lactic lact- acid. Yes. So the third acid that I missed was citric acid. Ding dong. Yeah, I remember. Oh, that. citric acid. Tartaric. I should have known that. Yeah. We well yeah we all should have <laughs> known that. <laughs> Hello, wine tasting. Oh goodness. Yes. Yeah, so malic acid turns to lactic acid through the malolactic process. Tartaric acid creates crystals called wine diamonds, and mm-hmm. citric acid does something else in the winemaking process that I'm sure is super scientific, but I don't remember what it does. Well, all wine contains naturally occurring organic acids. These are malic and tartaric being the primary. Well, they can mm-hmm. they contain a lot of different types of acids. Here's the thing I didn't know. Malic acid comes from the Latin word for apple, which is malum, uh, which can be converted into a weaker acid, lactic, uh, through bacterial fermentation, which we know about. Um, 
tartaric acid is uh, a primary acid and is what you taste in all wine. And it really is super important in terms of mouthfeel and balance on your tongue, like we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, Same with um, when a wine goes through malolactic fermentation because it creates a body and a density that. Yeah, you're changing. You're changing the acid. Yeah, and if you think about lactic acid or lactose, it's that's like why a lot of people use like buttery or creamy. Yeah, right. To talk about certain wines, Chardonnay that goes through mallow can sometimes be delicious popcorn flavored buttery Chardonnay from California. Usually, I'm sure it can. <laughs> nice to everyone i'm sure i can okay and citric acid is the it is this acid that's in fruit the same yes 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 mm-hmm. correct <laughs> <laughs> were those the rails did i just like go off on i no <laughs> no i'm sure you're fine okay i'm sure you're fine i don't know what you're looking at i never know where the world is gonna go next oh because of my terrible note taking skills. <laughs> <laughs> no. All my sites are sourced. <laughs> Wait, is that right? All my sites are sourced. Yeah. It sounded wrong, but you're right. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is wrong. <laughs> I have cited all my sources. How about that? <laughs> all my sites are sourced. Who am I? Who gave me a degree? Good God. Um, it's been a long week. Yeah. Yes, it has. <laughs> I, yes, it I has. I can just say, thank God the holidays are over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All my sites are sourced. Good God. <sighs> Jesus H. Um, Maybe we'll just cork that whole bit. <laughs> I d- that was pretty funny. Because <laughs> here's the thing. If you can't laugh at the dumb shit that comes out of your mouth, then... then. Go home, Shelby. Like, yeah. I stopped caring a long time ago, <laughs> sometimes to my detriment. However, um, like, I don't know. I think I'm pretty funny. I think you're hilarious. And whether or not other people think I'm pretty funny. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you're my all, friend. We're going to drink bubbles. And... All my sights are sourced. <laughs> Goodness. I love taking people along our little journey. <laughs> One of my friends said, I listened to your podcast recently, like probably a day or two ago and she goes it is absolutely and totally like sitting down with you and Brandon at dinner you guys just like drink a lot and talk about different things and following your life yeah I get it well and that's <laughs> part of the part of my problem is yeah. I have a tendency to get distracted in terms of information and so I'll be talking about like I have a clear you have an agenda I have an agenda and I come in with this, like, I'm going to talk about this, and it's going to lead to that, and it's going to lead to this, and it's going to lead to that. <laughs> it's going to flow, and, and it's going to be delightful, right. and the people will laugh. And and then I come in and stir everything up, <laughs> create chaos, and be like, all right, cool, let's have some wine. <laughs> which I think is important, and I really love and appreciate. <laughs> yeah, well, eh. I'm just saying. <laughs> Hey, you want to know where wine diamonds like the word? So here's so okay. Like, let's get serious for a second. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm out of control. Okay. Um. Ooh, can I have some of that wine? Oh, the Spanish wine. Yeah. Yes. Which would you I like it, it in there? Okay. I'm just gonna start drinking everything out of burgundy glasses. <laughs> we need to get some more. What if we got burgundy glasses with our logo on it, like etched? Oh. What do you think? Let's who, have a convo. Who wants a burgundy glass with our logo on it? I do. I want one. Well, me too. Yeah, we'll have to do it. All right. We'll do some research. Operation investigation is a go. Um, anyway, <laughs> wine diamonds. Where what are the, they? Where does the word wine diamond come from? Can I ask so you? that was a thing that in doing research for about um, tartaric acid and cream of tartar and all the things that I, I really was struggling to find is where does this term come from and how mm-hmm. did we really start using it? Well, tell me. Fun fact: mm-hmm. it comes from the German word Weinstein, which means winestone. Winestone in German-speaking countries, which is where you would have wine diamonds because mm-hmm. you have cold climate grapes and cold weather and cold white wine. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
So Alsace. Alsace. I did well today. I picked an Alsatian. Germany. Pinot Gris. Yeah. Right there because they've fought mm-hmm. over Alsace. I mean, not Austria. Fought, yeah. How interesting. Yeah, that's where it comes from. From Germany. From German speaking countries where you would, they would, they used to refer to them as wine stones. Wine stones. Weinstein. Weinstein. Okay, so why I wanted to talk about that um, aerator slash tap. Oh, yes, because. One of the reasons that they're touting it is it helps deal with not pouring sediment. Which is different than wine diamonds. It is different than wine diamonds, but I thought it was an interesting, like, that's one of the shticks you're going with is it helps you to, like, not deal with sediment. And a lot of the comments that I saw online, mm-hmm. um, Alyssa is who posted this, Alyssa King, one of our listeners, um, she was like, you know, what are your thoughts? And at first I was like, oh, that seems really interesting. I already aerate a lot of my wine because some of the stuff we drink is purposefully unfiltered. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. To to for a certain style, and so I don't always want bits in my glass. I yeah. don't care, but I you know it's sometimes neither here nor there. Um, and I think that it does benefit from a little bit of oxygen sometimes. I think that mm-hmm. it's not always the case in terms of you know we'll aerate something and I'll pour in my glass and then I'll pour in another glass aerated and I'll. You know, we'll both try them Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and see like, well, I prefer this. Well, that's the aerated or I prefer this. That's the unaerated. So sometimes it doesn't make a difference. I have an aerator that you can put the number of hours that you want. So like it will aerate to the number of hours. That's interesting. Yeah. So if you wanted to decant a glass for six or decant a bottle for six hours, you can put it through this aerator with the number six and it will aerate your bottle. That's really fascinating. For that, like... That's the amount of air that your bottle would get decanted for six hours. I have a thing that I got as a gift that is like a little stick with a certain piece of metal embedded in it. Mm -hmm. And what it is supposed to do for every second that you leave it in a glass of wine, it Mm -hmm. is supposed to mimic a year of aging in the bottle. What? So. Really? mm Mm-hmm. We got to try these gadgets out. And here's the thing, though. There is a tasteable difference in what? zero seconds and five seconds. Really? Absolutely. And not on every wine. Like, not every wine benefits from living in a bottle for a long time. You don't need to sell her everything. Not everything is meant to be held right. on to. No. But we there are some do. things that you're like, well, I kind of wonder how this is going to taste in five years. Now you can. Now you can. And they really won't release <laughs> how the science works, but it works. Probably has to do with whatever the charge of the metal is to pull yeah. certain things. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Again, uh, I'm not a scientist. Yeah. <laughs> science is hard. I just did a little <laughs> bit of research into chemistry today, and that was where it stops. We should do a wine gadget day where we like test the wine gadgets. Oh, we should film it. Yes. That Maybe would that's really a film super- one we'll do for a special Patreon only. Yeah. That's a great idea. Episode. Yeah. Anyway. Done. Um, so this aerator, so they're, they're touting it as it's got a, a, uh, you know, like a rubber seal, so it your wine will stay mm-hmm. um, Fresh. not exposed to oxygen yeah. for a longer amount of time. Yeah. You know, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't suck up sediment yeah. through the through the straw that is part of the this is this part gadget. of the tap system. Yeah, this um, and a lot of people were like, "I'm not that lazy. I don't need a tap." <laughs> well, <clears throat> I really like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't even see. Maybe if you have a wine that you want to taste over, I don't know, a week, maybe. I don't know, man. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know anybody who, I don't know. Can't. I can't. It's 60 bucks. I can get three bottles of bubbles for that. Well, do you like to aerate your wine? Do you like maybe the convenience of... So one of the things is that with, um, it's a one button aeration. You, it aerates and oxidizes with one button to soften tannins and enrich your, I'm reading here, uh, enrich your wine for luxurious taste. Oh, who's your copywriter? Um, (laughs) can we post this on Patreon so uh, so our folks can see? Oh, this is straight from the Amazon website, girl. Oh, really? Um, keep wine fresh longer. This wine accessory features an airtight rubber seal. So your wine remains fresh. Why do you have a comma there? Uh, so your wine remains fresh while you drink. Sorry. 
I'm not sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, easy cleaning, essential for wine lovers, no spiller sediment. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting, let me see if I can find it. Wine gadgets are so weird. I mean, they're super interesting and I'm sure I need all of them. I don't know if I can justify buying them. See, and I don't think you need... I think it depends on how geeky are you. How much do you want to put into your tasting experience? Yeah. If you want to drink your wine out of a fucking coffee cup, goddamn do it. Yeah. I guess that's what it is. Like, like there's yes, some things that I do want for sure, but then... I, I, don't, I don't... I don't know. Yes, there is a science as to why glassware is the way it is. Right, because we Listen talked about to it. the episode. <laughs> episode number... 18. 18. I like your ships. Um, ships. Ships. I got nice ships. Um, <laughs> chips? What? Snacks? Um, right. So there is a science to it, but are you beholden to that science? Do you give two shits? If not, yeah. then... Drink it out of a coffee, coffee cup. You know, will it enhance your experience if that's a thing you care about? Yes, it will. I mean, if you really want to put your wine on store it on the top of your fridge, then by all means, please do so. But you're going to ruin this product that took a lot of hands to make. Yeah. Because science has said, if you expose the thing, this thing to heat and light, then it's going to ruin the beverage. That's on you. Right. That's on you. Now, so are all gadgets necessary? No, they're absolutely not. For some of us, they're important. Yeah, like I enjoy one. having one or two different aerators because, mm. you know, one of them has a nice mesh filter so it catches sediment and maybe that's all we're doing is just straining instead of aerating, right? Those are very different camps. Um, what I thought was interesting with this is that they're saying that it's a precise pour into your glass with a 1.2 ounce of wine for every two seconds you hold the button down. So if you just want one ounce of wine, hold it down for two seconds, and then you have approximately an ounce of wine. Interesting. Now, that might be important if you're tasting or if you're having a get-together where you're trying seven different bottles and you want everyone to get one ounce of everything. You're going to need seven gadgets. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm... I know. I get it. Just yes. thinking out loud here and just in terms of like, I thought that was a really interesting factor that they felt to list. In... That's a weird thing to say. Well, I mean, if you're going to like how much liquid is dispensed, if I hold it down for X amount of seconds, I think is a common question you would get from wine folk. Yeah, that's true, I guess. I would want to know. I mean, I it's just, like it's like those it's like gadget. those um ounce ounce. uh specific pour spouts like when oh, you right. poured only pours yeah. one ounce like if i was using a gadget i would want to really know mm -hmm. well does it actually pour 1.2 ounces what the fuck is 1.2 ounces why not just say one ounce right why not say approximately one ounce i like those little pour spouts if you're like pouring in a tasting room and or <clears throat> what have you like those pour spouts are really super helpful sometimes yeah. you're i mean i don't know i find that they don't work that well you're a professional. I just do oh, it on the weekends. You're hilarious. <laughs> I am not. I just do it on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> you're hilarious. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was an interesting... Um, I thought it was an interesting... It's a wine enthusiast recommended. So they got the wine enthusiast really? stamp. I, th I think if you, if you want an aerator and you want something that's going to just like live on the top of your bottle, you only want to pour yourself a little bit. And you want to measure it. That's so strange. I think go for it. But a lot of people were really like, why would I ever need that? I'm not lazy. I can pour my own wine. Am, 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 am. Like, okay, just say that you don't want it and move on. Like, you or don't need to sit and don't... start a fight with someone you don't know about a gadget that none of us really need at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Good I... God. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You need a bottle of bubbles in your life. You need to simplify your life if this is what you're worrying about. I agree. I thought it was interesting. If I got one as a gift, I would probably use it. Well, yeah. I don't think I would buy one for 60 bucks, though. I wouldn't even encourage anybody I know to buy one for 60 bucks. That seems like a lot of money. 
I, there's a kitsch factor that I feel like appeals to some folk. Hmm. Um, I don't think I would purchase it for myself. If someone gave it to me, I would be like, oh, okay, I'll use Try it. Try it out. Yeah. You know what I'd do? I'd put it on a giant magnum or a double magnum for a party. Oh, that is a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Those bottles are obnoxious to like. Try and pour. Ugh. Yeah. Except for if it's bubbles, you couldn't use it for a bubble, right? Like, absolutely mm. not. But yeah, if no. you have a magnum or a double Probably magnum. Probably just a red. I mean, white would be fine, but. Do they have different sizes or is it nope, just a it's standard? Just, it's just a standard. I'd be afraid the little straw thing wouldn't go down all the way to the bottom of a magnum. Oh. Yeah. Look at you thinking ahead. Big yeah, picture well, girl you job. are. <laughs> what? I'm I said a... you're a big picture girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you're going to go down this road, you should think about all the repercussions. I mean, it's important <laughs> in the world of business. It's important in the world of tchotchkes. It's important in the world yeah, of... of wine. It's. I mean, if you're going to go down that road, throw down 60 bucks. I want it to work on my Magnum because that's what I want it to be used for. I wonder if you can lengthen the straw that is attached if there's different sizes different straw sizes because mm -hmm. wouldn't it be awesome to have like a four foot tall bottle of wine with one of those things on it why aren't we on a team getting paid hundreds of thousands <laughs> of dollars to talk about this <laughs> yeah i think we why are aren't so we far. on a strategy team we took a totally hey listen strategy don't steal our ideas <laughs> trademark all of this i took a business class where i'm practically a lawyer it was a business law class, so yes, I am practically You're a lawyer. You're totally a lawyer. Hey, I had to read depositions. Have you read a deposition? Uh, I have. Fuck. <laughs> and they were just mock depositions for my final, but good God. Yeah, they're pretty rough. There's a reason that I'm never going to work in law. Yeah. I well, mean, there's a lot of reasons, but depositions are one of them. Yeah, you're practically a lawyer anyway. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just like you're practically a doctor. I mean, well, you're definitely you know, a doctor of One might of wine. say a renaissance man. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor of wine. Jack Lawyer. of all trades. <laughs> One might say. One might say. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got today. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, the Spanish wine is really good. It's really starting to open up. I wish I had a narrator. <laughs> so this spent um, a oh, year God. in oak and a year in the bottle. Uh <coughs> It is 91% Tempranillo, 3% Malvasia, and 6% Viura. 75% uh, of the production comes from the vineyards that this producer owns. And then the other 25% they source from local growers. I almost brought a Tempranillo. I'm so happy you brought this. Power-packed wine that will last a long time. Drink through 2028. Earthy plum and berry aromas uh, precede a racy high acid palate. It's fresh and sharp. It's snappy. It's a red plum. So Wild that, berry flavors. <laughs> finishes with a tannic. That's enough. An oak spice. <laughs> Mild chocolate notes. They're saying you should sell her this for 16 years. It could it could handle it. Yeah, I think so for sure. I'm just I'm just starting to re-educate myself in terms of Spain, so I'm not sure how 2012 was for a year, but I yeah. think that this could definitely you could lay this down and I think I'm going to pick up another couple. And start a little Spanish do it? Spanish collection, yeah. Oh, I like it. Mm. You have a seller. This is wonderful. This is really good. Spain, I'm coming for you. 2018, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna dance that dance. Will you bring some Spanish wine next week for um, our Chinese New Year episode? Oh, yeah. I'll so. I'll I'll, I'll work hunt. On it? Okay. I'll hunt. I've got some really like super. Wait, fun is things. is New Year next year? Yeah, Chinese New Year's. <laughs> is New Year next year? Gee, look at me. New Year is next year. Are my sites sourced? <laughs> um, yeah, Chinese New Year. Is next, next week. week? Well, I mean, it's... Did you know that I was born on Chinese New Year? Really? Yeah. Wow. My birthday the year I was born was on Chinese New Year. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm a New Year baby. Per someone's lunar calendar. Yeah. Because well, it moves around, right? Yeah. Yeah, it moves around. Yeah. I'm the day that sure. I was born, the year that I was born, New Year was, I'm a, I'm a New Year baby. Ooh, fun. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that means in terms of my star chart. I'm going to look at it, and that's what I'm going to bring for next week. What, my star chart? No, well, like what the Chinese, what your Chinese New Year was when you were born in my Chinese New Year, and then the New Year of this year, and see what it says. Anyway, that's what I got for today. 
Wine diamonds. Wine diamonds. Thanks so much. Cream of tartar moves into the world of baking, moves into some sciencey things. Some like cold, cold and hot stuff. Cold stabilization, serious business. Yeah. And they're not going to hurt you. No, nope, it. it's not a fault. It's not a fault. We will call a fuck up when, when we see a fuck up. That's not a fuck up. <laughs> no, that's not for sure. Well, yeah. uh, until next week, friends. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And always take two bottles. Bye-bye. Ciao.